Okay, this is the second video in the React Native series. In this one, I specifically want to just talk about emulators, simulators, how you get them set up so that you can launch them from the command line. One of the reasons I want to talk about that is if you are trying to run your React Native application, you've got this far, you've got it set up, you've got the dev server running, and you want to launch and have them appear in the simulator or the emulator, if you don't have those running already, you'll oftentimes it won't launch at all. So we want to be able to have those up and running before we click on these buttons. So how do we do that? How do we get set up? Well, let's talk about the iOS simulator first. With iOS simulator, you can launch Xcode, and then from there you can launch the simulator. But it becomes a lot of work if you want to launch Xcode, wait for that to load, and then launch the simulator program from there. Now, if we go into the Applications folder in Finder, you can go down here and into Xcode. Where's Xcode down here? There it is. And if you show Package Contents, you will be able to drill down through here and find the simulator program inside this. But again, I don't want to have to drill down through here to find the simulator so I can launch it. I want to be able to, from the terminal, from the command line, launch the simulator. So, best way to do this is actually something that comes with Cordova and PhoneGap. They do web development for mobile apps as well. So they have a great program called iOS Sim. We want to install this globally. So, we can either do the npm install g, so npm install it globally, iOS sim. That's the first way to do this. That will give you access to the iOS sim program from the terminal, from anywhere in the terminal. Or alternatively, we can use yarn. So yarn global add iOS sim. Now I've already done this, I have it installed. Once you have this installed, that means you can run it from the command line. Now. When you run the program, iOS Sim, we're going to say iOS Sim Start, and then the name of one of the devices that are installed. I don't know the names, maybe offhand, what all the devices that I've got installed with Xcode, so I want to, instead of saying Start, I'm going to run the command Show Device Types. By doing this, it's going to look at the system, it's going to talk to Xcode and say, hey, you know what? What do you have installed? So here is a list of all of the different simulators that I have set up, all the different images for the different simulators. I can now take any one of these from this list and I can run them. I can launch them with iOS Sim. So iOS-Sim start, that's the command. And then inside the quotation marks, I just pick one of these. So let's launch iPhone 5 with iOS 9.3. So in double quotation marks, iPhone dash five comma space nine point three. Oh, apparently I didn't have that one installed. So it's using the first or closest available to that iPhone five, um, iPhone five S. And there it is with version 12. That's what I have launched here. So now that I have this, I can use the command in my browser, I can click Run iOS Simulator. Okay, great. It's going to download the latest version of the Expo client, and it's going to launch that right here. There it is. So it's installed Expo. Now it's asking, hey, can I launch your application inside of here? Sure. Okay, yep, yeah, good. And there we go. There is my application running. So that's iOS. We need to have iOS Sim installed, and then you can do iOS-Sim uh, list device types that will give you the list and then you can say iOS sim start and then give the name of the one that you want if you don't have the one installed then it'll give you the closest that it can so iPhone 5s is the one that I got all right so that's iPhone taken care of now for Android now in Android we do need to have a virtual device created first when you first install the Android SDK you won't have any um, virtual devices set up. So you need to come into Android Studio. You need to, if you don't have a 
an application already launched or already created, you can say create a new one, just take the defaults. It doesn't matter what is inside of here, we just need to get access to this tools menu. And on uh, OS X, you have to get in here before you can see the tools menu. Once you have an application that started up, then we want to go to the AVD manager. So this is the Android Virtual Device Manager. This is all the images for the different types of phones, the different versions of Android. So if I jump into AVD Manager, here it is. I have created one previously that I called Sheldon. You can call it anything you want. You can give it a name that's very meaningful. I like to keep these short because I launch them from the command line and I don't want to type a really long name. So this is just the one that I created. If I wanted to create another one, if you haven't created one yet, that'll be your only option when this window pops up. It'll give you the choice to create one. I'm going to click Create here. You can see I've got a, a list of a whole bunch of potential devices. Um, so let's take the uh, let's take the Nexus 6P. So I'm going to take that phone, but you can do TVs, tablets, whatever you like. So the Nexus 6P, that's the hardware profile that I want. I click Next. Um, I can choose Oreo Marshmallow, or I can download and install these other uh, different versions of the API. Uh, let's take Marshmallow. So let's say I've got Android 6 installed on this device or in this emulator. And right here, this is the name. So I've got one called Sheldon. Let's uh, create one called Howard. So I've got Nexus P, Marshmallow. It's going to be called Howard. This is the default orientation that I'm going to launch. And I will finish. There we go. So now I have two, one called Howard, one called Sheldon. Now that I have these, I'm done. I can close this. I don't need this and I don't need Android Studio open either. So I can quit Android Studio. I no longer need that to be open. Now that I have them, I will be able to come in here and say emulator. As long as you've got the Android SDK set up. Dash AVD. AVD, got to be able to spell, um, and then the name. Do you want to launch the one called Sheldon? Do you want to launch the one called Howard? Well, let's launch the one that we just created. So here it is, launching. This will go through its spiel. This will prepare the whole thing. But then, once it is up and running, I will now have my Android AVD running, and I can have my Expo CLI installed on this, and I can have my and my React Native application up and running on Android. It's just a matter of waiting for this thing to go through its whole life cycle and set up. But once we have it, there we go. It's up and running. Now if I jump back to the browser, from here we can launch it on the Android emulator. It's going to do the same thing. It's going to install on the device the Expo CLI. It's going to download that and then can see that it is installing Expo on device. Well, this is probably pretty small text on your screen, but it's downloaded it. It is now installing it. It's attempting to open it. Doing this. There we go. Simulator ready. Okay. So we'll say fine for those permissions. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. And then we'll go back. And here's our application. It's downloading, installing the bundle. And there it is. There's our application running on Android. So those are the commands. We've got iOS SIM for iOS, and then we'd use the iOS SIM start or iOS SIM device, show device types. And then on the Android side, once you've created your AVDs and you have to go through Android Studio to get to the AVD manager to build those virtual devices, once you have them created, then from the command line, you can launch them with the command emulator. And it's just emulator dash AVD and then the name that you gave it. Okay, so I hope that helps you out. Uh, hope that helps you get started with both of those uh, different operating systems. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching.